my dad doesn't do very many interviews and everybody just has one question whenever his name comes up. So dad, we're going to give everyone an exclusive. Everybody wants to just know one thing about you. The one thing mainly associated with you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Talking Trash Podcast, episode 12. We have a special, special guest. Who else could it be? My dad, the legend, Jimmy Galanti. How are you, dad? Whoa. I'm I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for being here, dad. So, uh, listen, I think everybody, let's just cut to the chase real quick, Ames, because ever since the documentary, there's been a lot of mystique to the trashers, mystique to the team. And my dad doesn't do very many interviews, and everybody just has one question whenever his name comes up. So, dad, we're going to give everyone an exclusive. Everybody wants to just know one thing about you, the one thing mainly associated with you. How did you get all those wrestlers to my birthday party? <laughs> <laughs> well, I happen to have been very good friends with Captain Lou Albano, who was a wrestler. And uh, I gave him a call, and it just so happened that uh, the wrestlers that did come to your birthday were wrestling in New Haven yeah. that weekend. And uh, it was an easy fix. We put it all together, and voila. Well, I get more more people. the 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 question I get the most, literally every day, usually mm-hmm. is, "Can how did the Rock get to your birthday party?" Triple A, and it's it's crazy to see how how big they've all become. But uh, so welcome back, everybody. Super excited for this episode. And how are you doing, Amesy? How's everything going? Good, good. Uh, excited to be here. We've our first guest. We. Uh we're lucky enough to. And he's have going a, no headphones. It's kind of like a guy bold, during. Bold move. He's going no headphones, like you know when guys have warm ups in hockey, they they no ditch bucket. the bucket. Yeah. So this is the typical. Me and you don't have enough games played to go no. Yeah, no, I'm not. No so I, I'm I'm thrown off, but. Dad, what do you oppose about the headphones? Is there something in particular you don't like about the headphones? <laughs> you have a beautiful head of hair for 71 years old, by the way. You look better than me. Thank and, you. Um, I'm agree. trying to let it grow on the back like Ames. Oh, yeah. Nice. He's going, he's going. I like it. I like it. Shave Could the you side imagine? Man. Quite frankly, I was going to stop and get you syrup today. but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine hey, as if long he showed up? One ingredient, if it's real syrup with one ingredient, then I'm <laughs> See, all for he it. Can't, he can't yeah. help him. That is the biggest trigger to this day. So many people, the two things about Ames they talk about is the way he eats pizza and syrup. Yeah. So I actually, Joe, Tr- shout out to Joe Trench. He gave me a gift the other day. He brought me a maple syrup and it came out of a bourbon barrel from, I think it was Litchfield Distilleries. The distillery like there. Yeah. 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 I, I've literally almost drank half of it. Is I've been it real putting syrup? It, I've been putting it in my car. It's real syrup and it tastes like bourbon, but it doesn't have any alcohol in it, obviously, but it's really good. I've been putting it in my coffee every morning. It's amazing. Do you like syrup, Dad? And if so, what is your favorite type of syrup? (laughs) I do like syrup. Okay. (laughs) And I like whatever Mr. Amesbury doesn't like. (laughs) And Jemima. He's chirping. He (laughs) works. I know, obviously, I've known my dad 37 years. He is is loaded today. He's loaded. He's locked in in for this. And he's ready to chirp. He's The thing with my dad is, and he's sitting here. I'm acting like he's not here. But he... (laughs) Has this all planned? Like he sees things before it's even gonna happen, so he's got everything. Like, like Wayne Gretzky, he goes to where the puck's gonna be. He's target. He, you have a target on your back. I mean, we might as well call him the Federal Professional Hockey League because you have a target on your back. And you know, I think it's uh, it's an absolute shame that you could play for any league, get suspended, and not been given for lack of better words, a bill of particulars as to absolutely why. And, uh, you know, I've been given this a lot of thought, something I haven't discussed with AJ. But uh, I'm thinking about reaching out to some of my Quebec brothers and possibly putting, for lack of better words, a goon league together. Yeah, that would be and, awesome. And, well, and, and bring them to Danbury, bring them here, there. Uh, it, it's, it's just a thought, but... Uh, you know, it's like everything else in life. Uh, if it's not, uh, you don't have a taste for it, you don't have to come to the game. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, well, we've, I, ta- we've talked about, how many times have we talked about hockey, you know, we've talked about it so much about, you know, when you went to um, Vail 
Okay, mm-hmm. you're playing senior hockey. And honest to God, those crowds drew better than some of these quote unquote professional leagues draw. Mm-hmm. And the game was fun and it was exciting. And, um, you know, it's funny. And I don't know that if you remember, you know, speaking of the Quebec League, the LNAH, we, you know, had pretty big ties up there. And we've talked about this. We, the second season, tried to, because we refused. <laughs> We one of the things we did with the trash is we refused to play preseason games. Right, that was our like that was another you mm-hmm. know stick it and we refused to play preseason games. So the second year, Richard Brussell was like, "You have to play a preseason game, Jimmy and AJ, and you have to do it." So we decided, all right, we'll do a pre. This was his idea. We'll do a preseason game, but we're going to do it in Quebec with the Quebec League. And could you imagine? You remember the That's Quebec so League weird. back then That's too. Unreal, That's true. Yeah. So you know, could you imagine the Quebec League oh, man. having? a U.S. type of conference. Yeah, yeah. You know, Quebec, yeah. uh, you know, the LNAH, it could be Quebec, and it could yeah. be the Northeast. Think that about it. Awesome. Maine, New Hampshire, Danbury, yeah. Massachusetts. Who knows? But yeah, um, cool. the, the Danbury Treasure team would fit right in with that Quebec league. Yeah. They, you know, uh, we were all, for lack of better words, outlaws. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll never forget when Brussel, uh, and we got some other Treasure stories coming, but I, I'll never forget where... The first year we were we didn't play any preseason games. We forfeited them like it matters. And um, yeah, I just remember Richard being like, "Hey, you know, you guys got to play a preseason game. I I can't keep bailing you guys out with the rest of the owners." So like, all right, we'll play preseason. And he called. Um, I think it was Wayne Veery and uh, up in Quebec, and we try. I forget. I think Wayne Veery must have been the first guy I talked about, or yeah. talked to uh, with the King of the Rings. Yeah, the King that of the Rings. That was the Ring first tournament. guy who reached yes, out to Wayne, me. Yes, Wayne. Um, Wayne. Veery. Wayne is a great friend. He's still he's still up there. Matter of fact, I talked to him last night. He wants me to come up just to check a game out, but. But, yeah, funny stuff. So but. the Quebec League, I've had tons of calls. Everybody always asks me, why don't you play in the Quebec League? Why don't you play in the Quebec League? They've changed their rules as of fairly recently. So if, you didn't, if you're not born in Quebec or if you didn't play Quebec Major Junior, I think it is, or, or have some sort of history in Quebec, then you can't play in the league. So that's if anybody's ever wondering why I've never played there, why yeah. I don't have games, there, I'm not eligible to play. Yeah, there, so. well, you but never it would know. Be cool if we had like an you, American. You never. Conference. I mean, we've been talking about this. You know, bringing <clears throat> senior hockey almost is almost as good as lower level professional. No, no disrespect to lower level professionals, yeah. but the senior <clears throat> hockey is um almost as good. But uh, yeah. you know, but again, Dad, thank you for being here. And uh, my pleasure. I had I had like you know when you just. You know, sometimes you could smell something and it brings back memories. My dad, who never goes anywhere empty-handed, brought us Dunkin' Donuts today. Oh, they just call it Dunkin' now? Or Dunkin', yeah. I grew up with Dunkin' Donuts. And I remember as a kid, and people think I lie about this, but since five years old, every summer, my dad wake me up, we go to White Street, we go to the yard, but we'd stop at Dunkin' Donuts. And I'd always have two sprinkled donuts and a chocolate milk. And... Um, Today, when my dad brought that box, I saw the chocolate, and I'm just having deja vu. I feel like we're back at the, <laughs> the paint shop eating Dunkin' Donuts, and um, which also brings me back to PTSD as a young kid watching poor Louie. Um, uh, if you, it's one of those if you know, you know. Louie at the paint shop at AWD um, was probably, arguably, pound for pound, had the most stressful job other than my dad <laughs> on White Street because this man was in charge. His daily routine for how many years did Louie work for you dad oh 20 plus 20 plus years imagine 20 plus years every day all you did (laughs) was paint striped my dad had trucks like you could literally eat off the trucks and i'll put up pictures on the youtube um again guys like subscribe youtube spotify apple Podcasts, and also you got video on spotify which i forgot ian keeps reminding me but um i'll put some pictures of these trucks you think of garbage trucks you think of shit you know these trucks were immaculate, and this poor guy, Louie, his job was to stripe the trucks. It, I mean, impeccable. My dad, we'd be sitting there at the paint shop. I'd be five, six years old watching this. Poor Louie's there, you know, sniffing paint up the yin I mean, that's all this poor guy was doing. I stressed, and I'll never forget. My dad would sit there. At least once a month, I'd see it. And uh, my dad, the thing about my dad is he likes to break stones, but... He's usually right. So he goes, uh, he'll be sitting there. My dad will be eating his hard roll with butter. And he'd say, hey, Louie, that stripe up top, it's <laughs> off. And Louie would be like, no, Jimmy, it's not off. I, I measured it 10 times. It's not off. My dad's like, I'm telling you that that's off. I remember one time particular, it was probably the late 90s. Louie was just arguing, no, it's not off. I'm telling you. My dad said, okay. He gets on the ladder. 
And I'm telling you, Ames, and I saw it with my own eyes, a millimeter maybe, wow. maybe maybe less, but it was <laughs> technically off. You know when you have the balance, the, the you know the um, balance, the tool, with the it's like a little fluid and it sees yeah. if things are balanced or like um, a level. A level yeah, excuse right, me. Yeah. And I mean, that little bubble was <laughs> off by no normal person would have ever seen that on the road and be like, wow, that stripes off. My dad, <laughs> strip it, <laughs> strip the whole thing. This poor guy, Louie, was pulling his hair out. So just seeing a Dunkin' Donuts, uh, you know, a case, it just, it just, it cracks me up. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that obviously, you know, everybody knows you from our documentary from 2021. And, you know, obviously you can't judge people based on a 70 something minute documentary. You're only getting a certain portion of people's lives. But mm. a lot of people have asked, and I've always told them no, but you know, when you grew up, you were a football player and you know, you didn't really know hockey at the time. So you played, you played football and um, you were, you were a high level. What, what would you play linebacker line or what, what, what did you play typically? In football? Uh, we played Iron Man. We played both ways. We, I was a guard. And I was a uh, linebacker. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, my dad was a football guy, and it's funny. We were joking about it the other day. My dad tried so hard to get me into football. Hard. I mean, to the point where (laughs) at school, you know, they play by ages. I think, I don't know, I think the youngest age at the time you could play tackle was like eight years old. And I was like seven. My dad, of course, knew the coach, pulled some strings, and now he's got me out there. And look, at that age, the difference between a seven and an eight year old, there's a difference sometimes. Big, yeah. And I'm sitting there, I'll never forget it. My dad's like, Good news, I got you to play you know, on the new Fairfield Falcons. And I go out there, I look like a bobblehead. He put the helmet on me. It, I was just like, <laughs> I was scared out of my mind. I go in there, and back in those days, the coaches yelled for real. Oh, yeah. Get on the ground, blah, blah, blah. It was like, it was like <laughs> army stuff. And I'm like, My dad dropped me off, and my mom was like, Why are you doing this to him? You know what I mean? And I'm just like, and I'm, I don't want to disappoint him, so I'm trotting out there. <laughs> I think I lasted three, four practices, and and I think I graciously was pulled. I don't think I quit, but I was graciously pulled. But uh, it's funny. He tried. And in the documentary, there's a part where from our home video where my dad's throwing me a ball. And, I mean, I you see better hands on clocks. I <laughs> dropped every – they were calling me butterfingers. I mean, I just, for some reason, as aggressive as I was, I just could not play football. So – we were joking about that the other day, and um, how disappointed were you in me that I never played football? Did that bother you at all? You know, to be honest, I've never been disappointed in you at all. So, ah, uh, see, he's trying nice. to make me. He's trying. He's trying to catch me off guard right now. He's trying to get me off my game. Uh, is my, that is that your hand, Damesbury? <laughs> are you touching? <laughs> <laughs> Keep your hands up, Daniel. Okay. Keep my hands on the table. Yeah, they call them diamond hands for a reason. Dude. <laughs> but uh, no, but. Uh, Listen, I, I, so, you know, I've told people this, you know, how I got into hockey was the Mighty Ducks. I think it came out in 92. Yeah, I and, feel like that's everybody's yeah. in, initial story. And and I just remember my dad was like, hockey? You know what I mean? Because hockey wasn't a thing here. And um, being the dad he was, he got us tickets. The first game we went to was Devils and Penguins. Wow. And the thing with my dad is he's like me, like, you. I feel like you got hooked almost right away, too, in a way. You know what I mean? Because it was new to him, too, hockey. And I, I feel like he... um. He definitely got hooked to it, and, and that's, I mean, you think about it. I mean, if I didn't watch the Mighty Ducks, he doesn't bring me to a Devils game. Who knows if we're all sitting here? Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? And um, and we joked earlier on about the birthday with Triple H, The Rock, and everyone, but a lot of people don't remember, or I don't even think it's ever been really told. I might have said in a pod earlier is you got Martin Brodeur to come to my birthday party the next year. Wow. Correct. We had it at uh, the Bruce Dice Arena, and Martin came and Sheldon Surrey. Sheldon Surrey, that's Surrey, right. That's right. I was trying to remember who else Surrey. Wow. And I mean, imagine those two birthdays back to back. You got you got ninety seven. You, you know when you got some of the biggest wrestlers that weren't even the biggest at the time, but they ended up being huge. the biggest. Yeah. And then the next year, we we got Martin Brodeur, and um, I mean, I always tell people because not not a lot of people know that. I mean, Martin Brodeur was such a nice, such a Gentleman. humble. Both of them. Yeah, Delver. Surrey was good. All Great. the girls love Surrey. Like he, right. he had the riz, as these kids say. <laughs> the riz, he yeah. had the riz, my guy. Like he, Sheldon Surrey was um great guy, and um, yeah, Marty was great. And I think Martin Brodeur's son plays in the East Coast League for right. Adirondack. Because I was really? talking to Nico Blackman. I okay. tell you, we're, we're we're buddies, 
And is he um, a goalie or a player? I think he's a goalie. Cool. Yeah, and um, I followed him on Instagram, and I said, "Hey, I don't know if you noticed, but your dad came to my birthday party in 1998." And he goes, "Yeah, my dad. He remembered when he wow. saw the documentary. He uh, he remembered." So cool. Shout out to Marty Brodo. Is he your best? Is he your goat goalie? He's my goat goalie. I, I, yeah, he's up there for sure. I mean, he's got to be. I, I always whoa, think whoa, of Kirk whoa, McClain. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean he's up there for sure? Well, he's, <laughs> well, well who do you consider I'm a better? Vanc- I'm a Vancouver. I don't. I, hey, listen, I'm not saying. I'm not saying there's anyone better. I'm just like when I think goalie, like NHL goalie. When I was growing up, Patrick Wah. It was Kirk McLean because I oh, played for Kirk the, and he's not anything. Listen, I'm, I don't think he's comparable as a goalie. I think Broder's the greatest, right? But when I think goalie, I'm thinking like when I when I got into the game, it was Vancouver Canucks, the yellow and black jerseys, Kirk McLean, yeah. Pavel Bure, Trevor. Well, Pavel Linden, Bure is one of your favorite like players. Are, remember? Oh Didn't yeah, you tell right, me Pavel's yeah, yeah. a great guy. <laughs> no. I love Pavel Bure. Great player though, but uh, I, I remember that game, the first one I took you to. You fell in love with Riche. Yes, Steph, so that's funny. And I'm glad you just said that. When I, the first ever game I went to, right? I always remember Scott Stevens ended up being my favorite player ever. Yeah, but, as well. but you're right. He's right. Stefan Riche, a sniper. Okay, I don't know what it was about Stefan Riche I used to like, and. Um, you're right, and he was number 44, and I remember Stevens was four, and uh, that's true. I always forget about Stefan Riche. I just used to like Stefan Riche. He was a, a sniper. He, he used to make, you know, he used to score a lot of goals for us back in those days. So uh, it's crazy, but um, no, I mean it was uh, it was definitely definitely some crazy times. That birthday was definitely. There's still people that remember that too, like kids that went to that birthday. Like I remember. The kids that went back to back birthdays never oh, yeah. forget that. Oh, no kidding. One year it's the Rock and Triple H. Then with Martin Brodeur and uh, and those were were those, those were all surprises to you, like you didn't know. Like, yeah, like, like my dad told me the day before. Yeah. Oh yeah, so tomorrow. Fun. Like we always had pool because my birthday's in August, so it was always a pool party. Like oh yeah, uh, we're having some wrestlers over tomorrow, and we go meet them at exit four or five or whatever. Yeah. It was funny. You think Candace holds a grudge still to this day about uh, birthdays? Ab- absolutely. <laughs> I got I got a Candace that holds a grudge to me too because that's my sister's name as well. That's oh. right. Yeah, yeah. And Candace so, always shout out to my sister Candace. Yeah. She always feels like she's getting the short end of the stick. And uh, I mean, it's, the, it's, it's 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 I'm in the exact same boat. My, <laughs> my sister Candace is in the exact same. So. Yeah, no, no. It's uh, it's it's crazy, man. It really yeah. is. Um, yeah. So uh, another stuff that I want to bring up with uh, you know. I was like, like I said, you know, I was, you know, wanting to do a little bit of research and and kind of look into things that I could find. And I remember hearing a story that AJ had told me about uh, the high school. And I think this is back in the football days. You would go, yeah. Was it, was, so was my, Can- Candace was she was a so, cheerleader. No, so so my buddy Steve Deep was playing football, and okay, he grew okay. up on our road. I mean, we're family friends, and. Um, and I apologize to the viewers if I might have told this. I don't know if I told this story before, but it's funnier now with him here. And, and again, we were we went to you know New Fairfield High School, and um, we went. I think it was oh, it was my junior year, so it was the fall of '02, and we go to a Friday game, and uh, it was kind of like our routine. We'd go to Portofino's, right, Visa right. and Adrian's spot, and then we'd go to the games. And sure enough, we're sitting there, me and him, excuse me, and uh, he. He's just staring off. Like in the third quarter, he's just lost interest at this point. <laughs> He'll usually, he's, you got him for about a quarter and a half to a half. And then he kind of, at that point, loses interest. So in the third quarter, you know, the play's over here. And he's just gazing straight. And I'm like, Dad, what's, are you all right? And he goes, uh, he's just looking. And when he's quiet is, no matter what, when he's quiet, it's, that's when you got to wonder what's going on. Good, bad, or indifferent. So he's looking, he's looking, and um, he goes, uh. So, you know, the, the the high school there, they got these six, maybe six big wooden pillars that hold the lights that go down. And he's like, you see that pole over there? And I'm looking at him. <laughs> and I'm looking straight. And I'm like, what pole? He goes, next to the ble- the way bleachers. Look to the right. You see that, that wooden pole? I said, yeah. He goes, it's crooked. And this is, like I said, the... Uh, and you said it. This is why he got to the top because of this detail. Yeah. He goes, that pole is, is crooked. I said, and I'm, what, four, 14, 15? I'm like, all right, all right, it's crooked or whatever. He goes, that's bothering me that that's crooked. But it wasn't It wasn't just the pole was crooked. No, no, no. So, so, so <laughs> no, we'll, I'll lead you into it. I'll lead you into it. So here's the thing. My dad, when he wants to do something, first of all, it does, he doesn't need a reason he's going to do it. But 
it starts with a minor detail like that, the pole. And then it, it then it's bothering him. So he's like, it's bothering me, that pole. Like, why is it like that? It should be straight, you know? And again, one out of 100 people may notice that, but most people weren't noticing it. Then he's like, look at the divots on that field. The field sucks. And it, the field did suck. Ah, And I'm like, Dad, whatever. Who cares? And the parking lot sucks. In the parking lot, <laughs> everything sucked. There was no landscaping, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The every, bleachers sucked. Everything, every, everything sucked. sucked. <laughs> it went from that pole is crooked to I hate the school, I hate the field. Let's. So that was a Friday. Weekend goes by. I don't even remember any of this. And then the Monday, I go to his office. We go to White Street and go to his, you know, go up to his office. And he's got the, you had, um... Like architecture, blueprints, blueprints. Almost, you know what I mean? And I'm like, what is this nut up to here? And I go, Dad, what's, you know, what is that? He goes, remember, remember the other day at the game? I go, yeah. He goes, remember that light pole? I said, yeah. He goes, I decided I'm going to straighten it. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to redo the whole field. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And I was just like, I was just like, and again, at that point in my life, I, nothing surprised me. And he had his blueprints out. It was every detail. And it had to wait until the spring and stuff. School was out. Every single day that summer, he'd go, come on, let's go. We're going to school. We'd ride up. We'd see where everything was. I mean, this was like, it looked like, like, um, it looked like a field you'd see in a movie. Like uh, he was, it was impeccable. Wow. And, and um, we, we put an irrigation system in. It was all sod. I would send my guys up when there was a home game, and they would paint the end zone just like the NFL. Wow. Blacktop the parking lot. We put trees around the place, put in new lights. My, you know, they're like family to us. The Rizzo's, Rizzo Electric came up, did all the electric work. Uh, we put in all new bleachers. And uh, opening night when we opened it, we had fireworks there and everything else. That's well, that, well, that's, that's my dad, <laughs> that's too. So See, the, awesome. thing is, the thing is, when you're a young kid, yeah. when I was a young kid, you see the things your dad does like this. Yeah. And you admire it, you love it, but you don't get it yeah. sometimes. You're like, why is he doing all this, you know? Um, as I get older now, 37, almost 38, you you understand the legacy thing, the doing it the right way. And you see me at the gym. I basically, I'll catch myself once a day, like, oh, my God, I just sounded like my dad. Did. Like, you want things right. Yeah. And at the time, you think it's extreme. Like, why are we doing all that? But... I get it now. Yeah. And the thing is, that was the topper yeah. the day before opening day. Guess what? You know what? I got the fireworks guys coming tomorrow. We're doing fireworks. And it was just like, it was, a, so it was cool. a show. And um, did you get, didn't you do uniforms and everything too? Oh, we got them all new uniforms, yeah. designed them, helmets, pants. That's and again, and again, you know, you're bringing this up, which yeah. I'm glad because he'll never bring up the stuff he does. And yeah. I'm the same way. You're the same way. Yeah. We, no one wants to bring up stuff they do. Yeah. But it's nice to hear it because the truth is a lot of people don't know. And, and I remember there was a time, uh, I don't know if I was at a high school, maybe it was Candace's years in high school, or maybe it was, but I remember there was a time where um, the Board of Education passed something where you had to play to, you had to pay to play sports in high school. Okay, yeah. There was a okay. deficit or whatever. Yeah. And an anonymous person paid for everybody. Paid for everyone to play. That's amazing. And yeah. and and um you know, again, nobody, you know, again, I know he's 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 rocking. He doesn't like to talk about the <laughs> stuff he does. But it's important because you know what? I, I know now as I get older and you you do things for people, we talk about this. Yeah. You know, just a little appreciation. You know, people can feel how they want. You can't Facts are facts. Whether you like someone, don't like someone, yeah. when when you when someone does something good, you it's nice to be recognized sometimes. Yeah. But so that field they got in New Fairfield High School, the concessions, all that stuff is all because wow. of a crooked wooden pole. That's and awesome. they could all that because if if my dad wasn't dozing off in the third, because had he just left at halftime, which yeah. I would expected him to do, and he ne I always wonder things like that. Like if he never if he never saw that pole, would that field ever get taken? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Um, well, I was saying when we kind of brought it up on the drive here, we were kind of just touching on a couple of things we, we were maybe going to talk about, and that was one of the things that came up. And I, I said it then, and you know, I'll say it again now: is like that had to be the quality, that same quality that made you repaint the truck or redo the field that had to be the quality that got you to the level you had gotten to with business and, and be able to grow and, and be so successful in life all the way to today. Well, 
you know, it's no different than when we started the Trashers. I mean, uh, it's always been go big or go home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've always put my money where my mouth is. And uh, as I've always taught AJ growing up, you know what? Be true to yourself. Say what you mean. Mean what you say. And at the end of the day, you're only as good as your word. Yeah. yeah, that's that's uh, that's, and we, the, and that's we, the one thing that somebody can never take and, away. And how many times yeah. have we talked about it? You know, yeah. when I did the show with Skinny and Snuff over in Philly, I mean, yeah. the, we've gotten into a place with the world where authentic people are like the extinct ones. And it's mm -hmm. weird. So I've always grew up that way. You, Like he said, I mean, the lessons I learned just watching him, you know, people used to, well, people think I'm lying. I used to go to the yard almost every day in the summer at five years old. Well, what that's were you true. doing? What was I doing? I was at his desk playing with trucks and my Ninja Turtles and soaking things in. Yeah. And um, you see how someone acts and you're going to soak that in. And, um, you know, again, we're, he's not going to want to do it, but we can sit here and talk for two hours about all and the things you know, he, he's done for people. People said when I brought up the idea of uh, the San Gennaro Festival, oh, no, you never be able to pull it off. Yeah. We're going into the third year. And people that actually show up and stay, they're like in awe. It's well, we'll get to well, we'll see. get to that because yeah. it all comes down to my dad. Like I always tell people, you don't have to actually be an architect to build things, right? Like my dad has always been a visionary, and we have in that picture I have in my office of me and him before the arena got renovated. The News Times mm -hmm. took it, and my dad's like this. He's showing people, and I'm in my Philadelphia 76ers jersey. I'm just looking like. Just taking it all in. Yeah. And I keep that picture because when I look at him, I'm like, you see that vision, that eye. Like, if you look at his eyes in that picture, it belongs in a museum, I'm telling you. Cut me out of it, but that belongs in a museum. <laughs> and I'm telling you, there, there's, I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes when people like my dad, when they have that look in their eye, like, this is going to get done. Mm -hmm. It's going to get done. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's, it's just, which brings me... Um, you know, we talk about stuff he did for football. I never even played football. So hockey, when I got into high school hockey, um, it's funny. My dad kind of became the GM of the new Fairfield High School hockey <laughs> team. My sophomore year, all of a sudden, my dad got into it a little bit. You had came home from, four, you know, you came home the first stint you went away, and I was a freshman. And when the Danbury Arena was formed, uh, my sophomore year I played, and— um, Next thing you know, we had new uniforms, new, new, everything, pants, shells, socks. I mean, we were nice. using hand-me-downs and yeah. he comes in and, you know, as a kid, you're like, ah, I don't want people, you know, it's my dad. I don't want people to think I'm getting favored and this and that. And, um, but I look back, I, I do the same thing for my son. That's you know so what I mean? Cool. I know you do the same thing. Yeah. And, and, uh, but it's funny. I would watch him. My dad was becoming the GM of this high school hockey team. <laughs> and I feel like it was like a seed. Yeah. I was going to say, maybe that's what kind of. Well, Maybe. you had what a lot of people don't know. I mean, local people know, but a lot of people don't know. Way before Trashers, you had um, race cars. You right. didn't race them, mm -hmm. but you owned a race car team. Yep. Do you want to talk about where that track was? I think it was, where was that? Stafford? Or Stafford, Stafford Speedway. Uh, yeah, Stafford Speedway. Uh, I got uh, hooked up with Teddy Christopher, who was a great driver. And... Uh, I don't know, uh, over a hundred and something wins together. We won a national championship. Our car sat on the Hard Rack Cafe down in Florida, the uh, the lobby, the night of the the dinner. Uh, we had, uh, you know, we had great luck. How many years in total do you think you were you were with Teddy and, and with that Mystique? So his his the team name was Mystique, Mystique okay. Autosports. It was cool. silver, again. At AWD on White Street, across from our C4 plug, Mobile, yeah. right? <laughs> He'd in the, which shop was it where the car would be, or um, that uh, right when you went through that one gate, like right where Mobile is. Gate, yeah. there, there was yeah, a building to the left. There was a building there that we used for uh, actually storage. Yeah, but it wound up becoming a race car shop. Cool. This guy, I'm telling you, one of the biggest thrills. I, so again, my dad didn't drive the car, but every Friday he'd go to the race. Okay? Like yeah. clockwork yeah. during race season. And I felt like as a kid, every weekend on the, on the Saturday, he'd come home with a trophy. I, I'll, I still see these <laughs> trophies. And sure enough, the trophies would be in that race shop. They called it the race shop. The cars were impeccable. It was silver, black, red, right? You had red Civil in there. black and red, and then we changed it to blue. But yeah. 
probably one of the funniest uh, things was when Teddy and I first got together. And uh, we put the car together and we went to Stafford Springs and they're racing and, you know, it's a 50, 60 lap race that's all out. And uh, Teddy comes in second. And this is one of Teddy's, Lord rest him, he, he, Teddy died in a plane crash uh-huh. going to a race. But um, Teddy's in the center of the infield and the cars are there and I'm walking across and he's looking at me and everybody's cheering and I'm, I'm always one for setting a tone. He said to me, uh, Jimmy, what's the matter? You don't look happy. I said, you were the, you were the first loser. <laughs> he came in second that race. Came in second. I said, you were the first loser. And that set the tone and we just lit the world on fire. Well, oh, Teddy Christopher awesome. in the race car world is a legendary driver. Okay, we're not talking NASCAR. We're talking, what are these? Modifi- no, they were NASCARs. Oh, but, the- uh, he, they were short tracks. We were on yeah. short tracks. And know? Teddy cool. was like the bad boy of race cars. And see, this is where, as I get older, I'm seeing these patterns, okay? Yeah. Uh, and these, this was the bad guy racing team. And That's there'd be fights know. in the pits. Oh, yeah. Um, fights, uh, <laughs> brawls. I'd go, to ah. the, so I'd go to some of the races. There'd be fights. And it was always, Teddy was in the middle of something. They would take a car out just so we couldn't race. The next Friday, we'd show up with a new car. I mean, it was just crazy. Yeah. It was. I went to Stafford this past so- season. and I He had wants a, to start racing now. Yeah, He's actually, like, yeah, I want to race. <laughs> That's like on my bucket list. So okay. uh, I've, I've talked to a guy about it, trying to organize one for the summer. But but uh, I had a blast there. That was so much fun. It I, is. I had so it's much adrenaline too. when it was coming. But I was like a little kid. You know, I'm sitting there with, I had my whole family. My kids loved it. Um, every time they'd come flying by, it was I had a blast. It, it, um, and then the, we were in the pits, and, and the, everybody was really great and, and showing us around. So, and so again, you talk about patterns in life. So I'm I'm sitting there and young for years. I remember race season. He'd be away on Fridays, come home, usually with a trophy in his race shop. He all the trophies were in there. Right. I used to think it was the coolest thing to like go and just see all the trophies and. Um, yeah, and then it went from, then I get into high school, then it's like the racing was still going on, but then I feel like, again, I talk like this because I'm telling you I'm just like him. Then he, he's kind of like, all right, I need something different. So now he's he kind of appoints himself general manager of this high school hockey team, and, and not in a malicious way. Everyone loved him. Everyone, well, almost everyone, maybe not some of the coaches, <laughs> uh, allegedly off the record, but all the kids loved my dad and, and everything, and just spoiling us, you know what I mean? And we loved it, and we were just so appreciative of it. And, um, you know, again, next thing you know, he's like, camps. You know, again, we're not in Canada. This isn't high-end hockey where we're yeah. playing. And next thing you know it, he's bringing in, you know, minor league hockey. You know, Paul Gillis, a legendary minor league hockey coach, ends up being the trasher second coach down the line. But we're skating with – um, so this is where I want to get to. The New Haven Knights were a UHL team um, in the, the early – Was it the Nighthawks? They were the Nighthawks, but at, at the early 2000s, they became the Knights. Okay. They were white, silver, purple. Um, anyway, they, you know, all of a sudden, I don't even know how, but he gets kind of hooked in with this New Haven team. So a lot of people don't know this. So before the Trashers, before I get hurt playing hockey, before any of the stuff you see on the dock that's immortalized now, I remember you were trying to buy the New Haven Knights. Yeah, I was trying to buy it, and... Uh what wound up happening is uh, they went bankrupt. They couldn't fill the stands, etc. And uh, the city of New Haven held their medallion as collateral. And I wound up buying the medallion from the city of New Haven. And that's how the UHL got the dynamic duo. Okay, so so, how, it, so yeah. how it kind of started was, if I remember correctly, I could, and my dad's got a memory too, I believe it was my, it was going into my junior year of high school, right? Because all of a sudden during summer camps, Jared Burnett shows up, Paul oh, yeah. Gillis, yeah. some like high level minor league guys, yeah. even American hockey league guys. I'm yeah. like, what the hell is going on? Sure enough, my dad went up in the stands. Like, why is my dad here at practice? You know what I mean? And now he's becoming, like I see what he's doing now. I'm like, oh my God. He's, like, getting all these people to come support us, you yeah. know, Fairfield High School hockey, you know. And um, then I find out. Um, so let's let's backtrack a little bit. Section 102 in Danbury, right? The original section was Section 14 in New Haven. There was a 
think of section 102 on steroids. That was section 14 in New Haven, legendary. When they found out my dad was trying to save their team in New Haven, didn't happen, not his fault, just didn't happen. They never forgot that. So flash forward two years, all right? We'll get back to that. So keep in mm -hmm. mind the New Haven section 14 fans, they see, oh, we're losing our team. They're mad at the city of New Haven. They're getting rid of our team. But this guy, Galanti from Danbridge, trying to save it. They're jerking him around or whatever. So the team folds, right? So my senior high school, I get hurt. Now, Dad, I don't know if you remember. You were at the game I got hurt. We Absolutely. were in a – we played a random away game. We are maybe like two hours away. And we took the team bus. You know, I get hurt. And I remember um, – you know, I got. You know, I didn't have to wait till the end of the game to leave with the boys. They they knew my knee was screwed, so my dad took me. My dad had this little Mercedes two seater, and it was tight. And I was in so much pain. And I just remember him driving me. Drove all. You know, when you're in so much pain, you're almost like delirious. You yeah. know what I mean? I just was. I just remember my dad. It's gonna be okay. Was it your knee? Yeah, my right knee. knee. Yeah, his knee swelled up. It was the size of a cantaloupe. Oh. It was. It was. It was bad. And I'm in this little car with him. He always had the best car. We're in a little car, and he's driving like Batmobile. You know what I mean? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm delirious. And we get to the ER, and I just remember my dad. You know, it's gonna be okay. And then the doctor said it's like it's not okay. You know, I remember they had to drain all the fluid, and it was nasty. Thanks. And um, so, and this could be the truth because I never ever asked you seriously, it's always been assumed, and I've always assumed it's been part of it. They tell me my senior year, you're never playing hockey again, basically. I was done for the year. Obviously, I wasn't going to play in college. Was that, was you trying to buy New Haven kind of with the seed to bring the trashes here? Was it my injury? Was it a combination? When was it the time that you said, you know what, we're going to, like, was there a certain time where it just clicked where you're like, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to start something here in Danbury? It, it it was a combination, but it was it was most it was mostly you. So, uh, you know, when the doctor sits there and says you'll never be able to play or get on the ice again and uh, you love the sport. What else? You know, uh, at the time we had Mayor Bouton here and. Uh, he also wanted to do something in downtown Danbury to try to revitalize everything, and I went to him, and he uh, he backed us a thousand percent, and the trashers were formed. That's amazing. It is, so, and and, awesome. and so again, the infamous story. We've talked about this a few weeks ago. You know, shout out to our buddies uh, Joey Merlino and Snuff. They love this story. Yeah, the infamous Sunday sauce sauce. Yeah. The infamous Sunday sauce. macaroni sauce night where my dad looks at me, had to be February-ish, 2004, and I tell people, and I'm going to repeat the same, like, I always tell people, there's no, like, I never embellish a story because if you look back to every time I tell it, it's always the same. But now I got the source right here, the root of it all. And I remember you just looking at me, and this was like these little mind games he would play with me sometimes, and everyone, he tests you in different ways, and he's... But you, you see how, like, before he was breaking your balls and, like, yeah. is he serious, is he not? But he, I never, he was messing with me, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to start a pro team here, and you're going to be the GM. And I thought being slick, I was going to be a smart-ass bag. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Sure, I'll do it. Not knowing. If and then he's just, just like that. He just went, yep, nods, all right. <laughs> Finishes the macaroni, we're out. Three days later in the paper, me and him, I'm like, what? Wow. <laughs> what do you? <laughs> that quick. So, did you already know at that time that that it was kind of a go? Oh, I I knew I was doing this. And cool. Was, no one else knew he was do, the league did it. But that's what I love. Yeah. He didn't speak to Bruce. No one yeah. knew. He just knew I'm doing it. That's amazing. You're either man. coming on board or that's yeah. it. That's I it. remember Brosell coming to my office and he sat there, and I uh, told him I'd like to bring the team to Danbury and, you know, well, I have to go back and I have to speak to the rest of the uh, team owners and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I purchased the medallion from New Haven, which they didn't know, which. So is the medallion like the. The medallion is the. The ownership. The ownership. So, you know, New Haven was part of the UHL. So now I owned it. So he was going back and forth, and uh, he says, well, I still have to go back and talk to them. And, he's, and I said, well, how much is it? And uh, I wrote him a six-figure check, and he just looked at me, and I handed it to him, and I said, 
here you go. Go back and talk. To <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That was the end of it. That's awesome. Now, you know That's what so I always cool. wondered, too? Someone on Instagram private messaged me personally once. And again, I've never been asked this. And I can't even tell you. You mm-hmm. talk about, you know how we talk about things and conspiracy theories and what ifs and this and that. Someone asked me, AJ, did you ever think if you never got hurt, does your dad start the trashers? Like if you don't get hurt, you finish your senior year, yay, 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 everything's fine, you're healthy, you go to college. You ever thought like, oh, do you think it was? The, 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 the thought of having that team, as I said, you know, I made a commitment to, uh, to the city. And uh, that team was going to happen regardless. Yeah. You would have been named president yeah. regardless. Uh, unfortunately, your uh, your uh, accident probably accelerated uh, the accelerated whole thing. Accelerated everything. Huh. Yeah. See, I never knew that. And the other thing, too, is you said you, you had the ownership to New Haven, technically, the medallion and everything. Did you ever think, like, because, again, we don't even have to get into, like, all the stuff he had to do to the arena to get it up to oh, snuff, yeah. for the, which yeah. wasn't his. People thought we owned the ring. Which, he never owned the ring. So he. Yeah. But but my point is, you ever think if the original owners of the arena, like say they gave you a hard time about doing it, do you ever think, was there ever a chance of it going to New Haven? No, quite frankly, uh, my attorney, Hugh Keefe, had a uh, very good relationship with Quinnipiac College, which I know you don't know anything about. They were building an ice rink, but it was a year away. Huh. And uh, that's where the team would have went if... Uh, to really? Quinnipiac. 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 Wow. Wow. Crazy. So Quinnipiac could have been the, the trashers. trashers. Quinnipiac trashers. Right. One, of the, one of the biggest colleges in yeah. hockey yeah, right yeah. now, that they arena. Just, they just won a national championship. Yeah. 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 Phil Jubileo works for the yeah. Quinnipiac. Yeah, yeah. right. Wow. I never, never knew that. So, yeah, well, so you know, if Danbury gave, us a hard, gave him a hard time, it would have been Quinnipiac a year later. Yeah. I that's mean, crazy. Uh, my attorney, and he's a close personal friend, Hugh Keith, uh, sat on the board at Quinnipiac, and he uh, spoke to them, and they were all for it, and uh, it was going to be, uh, we were going to have signage the whole nine yards, but it was uh, a year, year or so away, and uh, I had already made a commitment to uh, the UHL to start that yeah. season. So fortunately, uh, a lot of friends and contractors that are friends uh, threw it in high gear and we got the rink done. Now, a lot of people don't uh, see a lot of people, you know, they they love the name, the Trashers. They love the logo, the whole nine yards. The funny thing is I always tell people it was my dad's idea to name it the Trashers. Now, now looking back hindsight, it just seems like such an obvious name. But the funny thing is I never liked the name at first when he told me, yeah, it's the Trashers. Um, I was like. I don't know why I didn't see it. And then the rest is history. We get the logo and everything's like, wow, now I see it. You know, yeah. now it's a legendary logo and name. But were there any other names you were thinking of other than the Trashers? Or was it just always the Trashers? That was it. Yeah. You know me. Once, yeah. once it's locked, it's locked. Yeah, nice. that's true. <laughs> that's awesome. That is true. That is a crazy thing about Quinnipiac. I never thought about, like, if if Danbury somewhere. was like, no, you can't improve yeah, our well, rank. A, you lot know? Of, a lot of people didn't know that. Like yeah. I said, and you know Hugh. Hugh knew, uh, Hugh did speak to them, and they were all for it, and uh, that's what happened. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, Hugh represented me when I had my little disagreement with the uh, with the <laughs> government. I said to Hugh jokingly, I said, aren't you glad we didn't go to Quinnipiac? And he was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <clears throat> so we get so obviously we start the team, you know, we don't have to go into all the details. We're going, mm-hmm. me and him going, you know, the whole team, the whole nine yards, and um your relationship with Commissioner Brisson, I always call him Mr. Brissell still. I PTSD yeah. yelling at me every Monday morning. Sorry, Mr. Brissell, Mr. Brissell. He was with my dad, like watching them together, it, it was like ping pong. Because Richard, you know, Mr. Brissell was very quick too. And he's used to he wasn't used to dealing with a guy like my dad. I'll give it back and back. Yeah. I used to love watching you two. It was like fun, sp- you know, so like boxing, like sparring. Yeah. It was fun, light sparring back and forth, back and forth. And and I used to love it. Like, and we never, we didn't prep you on this question, but did you, do you have any like favorite things about Mr. Brissella, like stories or something in particular that? Yeah, 
After a few times going back and forth when we first got into the league, uh, I, I remember having a phone call with him, and uh, I said, okay, Richard, now that we both know we're both full of shit, <laughs> <laughs> let's move forward. And he started laughing. I started laughing. And actually, uh, contrary probably to popular belief, we had a great relationship. Yeah. He was, uh, you know, um, he hated making those calls on Monday morning as much as I hated getting them. But uh, I think he enjoyed the... Uh, I wouldn't call it limelight, but I think he enjoyed the the camaraderie and, 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 and back and forth. Well, he, and again, so let me show how the chain of events would go. We'd have the weekends, whether it was home away or a mix. We'd do something. Something would happen. And here's how it would go. I'd be driving on 684 back to New York to go to college on Monday. I'd get the call from Missouri, usually 730-ish, yelling at me. Ah, you're, yeah, nah, 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 nah. I'm telling your dad. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm, the, my next call is to your dad. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Brissell. It won't happen again. I'd be like having to hold, I'd have to hold the phone away. I'd be laughing. <laughs> all right, okay. I'm calling your dad. I mean it. It was like, that's how it was. I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. It's like, all your, right. it's like your principal. Yes, I'm calling your dad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He'd call my dad. Of course, he, his tone would be a little different, my dad, but he called my dad and my dad would be like, ah, just deal with AJ with that stuff. So it would go, we'd play good cop, bad cop all the time. And that's hilarious. And, Bouncing um, him back and forth. My favorite thing was, I'll never forget it, maybe a quarter of a way through the first season, not even halfway through. I remember um, I was with my dad when we got a call and the secretary was like, ah, Jimmy, uh, you know, Richard Purcell's on the line. And my dad kick his feet up on the desk, push speaker. <laughs> hey, Richard, how are you? You know, Jimmy, I got to tell you, you guys are really out of control. Seriously, I'm doing everything I can to keep you guys in the league. You guys are insane, blah, blah, blah. Um, we're finding Wingfield a thousand bucks. We're finding. So my dad goes, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Calls the secretary in. Write Mr. Brissell in the UHL a certified check for $10,000. Richard, we're sending you some money. That's our retainer. When we get low, when we get down to like 250 bucks, tell me, I'll write you another check for $10,000. Yeah, it, it got to a point where every week <laughs> I was writing a check. So, so you might as well just give him a I credit. Said, I said, Richard, I'm just going to wire the money to you, 10000 When you get it down to like 500 bucks, call me. I'll send you some more money. <laughs> and that's the end of it. Don't bother me. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, this guy's running, by the way, through all of this. He's running the biggest trash company in, you know, around. Yeah. And he's got to deal with Brissell. Oh, man. Baldy calling him up. But talk to AJ. Talk to AJ. And I'd be like, oh, did you talk to my dad about it? And he'd be like, oh, guys, we used to drive. We used to drive him. Uh, we used to drive him crazy. And, and um, you know, what a lot of people, and we've never spoke about this. You know about this. But we've we've never, um, we've never spoken about this. Um, Situation. So after our first year, Dad, we have you know we have a good um, we have a good um, what does that say, Dad? Bath. <laughs> My dad's writing me notes over here. I can't. I see gotta it. go to the bathroom. <laughs> We're gonna take a break, everybody. Ah, uh, yeah. We'll My dad used the bathroom, and you don't tell Jimmy not to use the bathroom. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> We're, we will be back after this. You know, we talk about. You know, so much was centered in that documentary around Brad Wingfield and a major plot was his injury. And um, a lot of people don't know. We announced Brent Gretzky first. You know what I mean? But the first person we ever signed for real was Brad Wingfield. And yep. you talk about just connecting right away. Yeah. And uh, it's like you. Like I tell when I met you, I was like, oh, my God. It's like I'm having like deja vu like this is a tri this is a brad wingfield type of guy and i was like we're gonna become family and um watching my dad with winger you know as a young kid and he was he would advise winger like life yeah. stuff you know what i mean and he would be there and you saw the emotion in the documentary when winger saw my dad and both of them crying and well you weren't crying were you crying no he was crying yeah yeah he wasn't <laughs> crying just winger was crying <laughs> Almost like when I used to beat him in video games, he would cry during yeah. that scene. But, you know, also a lot of people don't know, Lord rest him, um, Jared Burnett, um, who's no longer yeah, with us, he's, unfortunately. He's from my neck of the woods as well. A lot of he, my friends were friends with him. He, um, Jared, again, was, I met Jared before the Trashers because he was playing in uh, New Haven. I, was right, he in New Haven or New Hartford? Haven. He was in Connecticut and he, my dad hooked up with him somehow. Um, was it through Paul Gillis maybe or something? But Paul, I believe, yeah. 
long story short, I mean, I met Jared. I mean, he was built like, I mean, oh, yeah, a wrestler. He's a beast. I yeah. mean, he was built like a shit brick house. And I just remember my dad took a liking to him and vice versa. And it was like, um, it was awesome to watch because you know as being a tough guy, and I know from seeing it, like a lot of the tough guys, even in the old days, not that they were afterthoughts, but ownership, the GMs, they, they, they're palling around with the goal scorers. They're palling around with, you know, the guys that are going to bring the girls to the rink. But we just attracted the crazy of the crazy. And um, I always, and now I feel like that with the gym because, as yeah. you know, I <laughs> know how to attract them. And uh, I just would always watch how my dad was with these guys and just the mutual respect. And Jarrett lived at our house for a little bit. Jarrett lived at our house for, so I'll tell you a story wow. about Jarrett Burnett, Lord rest him, because I love him. And so our, our, our buddy, Scott Parker, I didn't realize they had the rivalry they had, Jarrett yeah, yeah. and Scotty. Yeah. So going back when Jarrett was living with us a little bit, he would come home late at night. He was out. He'd come home to our home, his home at the time, two rotisserie chickens. Yep. Eat them like a cave. I thought he was going to give me some. I'd be up playing video games. He'd come in. He'd always have a cutoff shirt on. He's, you know, jacked up. Comes two rotisserie chickens. Just eating them by himself. Double fisting them. So I used to talk <laughs> to him. What's it like? You know, in the, and he goes, he was on the Anaheim Ducks. Yeah. What's it like? You know, what is it? And he would teach me about the Forcer Code, the whole nine yards. But I asked, I'll never forget it. And I told um, our friend Francesca Parker this story yeah. recently. I remember asking him, you know, Jerry, and at the time, when you're a young kid, you think anyone with muscles is the toughest, you know? Yeah. Meanwhile, it's whoever's the toughest is the toughest. Yeah. I'll never forget asking him, Jared, who's the toughest guy you ever fought? Who's the hardest you ever got hit? He looked at me, goes, the sheriff, Scott Parker. And this was back in the VHS days. They fought like... 15 times over their career, yeah. and they had, like, a legit heated well, rivalry. Parker was in San Jose, I think, and he was in Anaheim. Right? And, so. and Parks used to get the best of them. And I'll never forget Jarrett, Lord rest him, telling me, no, Scott Parker is the toughest guy. Wow. And I used to be like, who the hell is Scott Parker? I didn't really know, yeah. know him. And uh, but I'll tell you a funny Jared Burnett story because I got in trouble for this. My mother <laughs> used to have a laptop in the kitchen. You know, if she was in the kitchen, she'd go on the laptop, whatever. Jared Burnett... Again, Lord Rest, this is not a disrespectful story. This is uh, an homage story to him. Jared Burnett would come home, eat his two rotisserie chickens, play little video games with me. I'd go up to bed, and he'd be up. One day, I come downstairs uh, to get, like, something to drink early, and he's on my mom's laptop watching pornography. I said, Jared, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, no, 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 nothing, nothing. Closes the thing. I don't think anything of it. I'm like, dude, you're crazy. That's my mom's. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'll click it. Next day, the idiot never clicked X that, out of it. Oh, he just no. closed it. <laughs> I, I get say, up. He didn't delete the history. I get up. My mom's downstairs, opens up. Oh, my gosh. I get blamed, and I got in trouble for it. I was like, no, I'm not going to rat on Jared. And Jared comes up. He's looking at me like, <laughs> and I'm just like, but these were my big brothers. You know, yeah. I didn't have brothers, and yeah. I had my sister, obviously, but I never had big brothers. So. Yeah. These guys were coming in the house and, and running ruck shot. I mean, he was a character, Jared. You know, I've always been a firm believer in, in respect, loyalty, and I treated our players, when we said they were family, they were family. I remember them going on a road trip the first year, and uh, before they went, uh, we had 115 people at our house for Thanksgiving Day dinner. Yeah. The bus was at the bottom of the driveway. They said goodbye to their wives, girlfriends, their family. Got on the bus. I want to make sure they had a Thanksgiving Day dinner. That's amazing. Uh, you want to pay people what they're worth or you feel they're worth. Uh, and you just do, you know, we had we had a mutual respect with 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 all of the players and um you know jared jared great guy he he had some personal issues uh i remember when he passed uh, i had a conversation with his mom vicky and um i remember her uh, i said to her that uh, i've always you know i 
I say what I mean, I mean what I say. I said, anybody that played for the Trashers were family. And um, AJ and I picked up the cost of this funeral. Wow. So wow. a lot of people don't know that, but that's amazing. You know what? Uh, you don't you don't say your family, and uh, yeah, yeah. We well, talked about you, we I talked mean, about this. You yeah. guys have been you guys have been nothing like you've said that since I got here, and even before I came, and um, you guys treated me nothing like like the, like I am family here. And for me, it was a tough adjustment. I moved my family across the country, but you guys welcomed me over to your. I came over to your house for family things. You actually brought my family, including my parents, to Easter. I think it was Easter dinner or yeah. Easter lunch we went for yeah. and stuff like that. So um, you guys really made my transition across country a lot easier because I do feel I do feel that way. I do. F- you are my family, and and we're gonna be family and, forever. You know, Brad. Brad. Uh, Brad was like a big brother to AJ as well as Jared, and uh, Brad and I had a very unique relationship when Sarah was pregnant. Uh, uh, I made sure that uh, they stayed around so she could have the baby in the United States. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, and he's an up-and-coming player now. Yeah. yeah. He's an up-and-coming I player. Love for, I and love you for look the him up on his elite prospects, it says Danbury, Danbury Connecticut. Connecticut, just yeah. like my son will, actually, yeah. now. So, well, listen, aside from all the nice stuff like this, some yeah. of the funnier stuff, all right? Like, I remember <laughs> my dad used to get to, it'd be 2, 3 in the morning. We get a call back with landlines with the house phone, yeah. and it would be someone, a bar owner, maybe even a cop. Hey, Dave McIsaac. Someone, what you two guys just broke these guys' nose. Co- coach, right? McIsaac was a coach. Dave, or Dave McIsaac we played, played for on us. our team. Oh, and did he? Was okay. A coach. coach, and after a game, we won, and they went to. Uh, it's not there anymore on Federal Road. It was uh, Brannigan's Restaurant. And they were at the bar, and there were a couple of young ladies there, and unbeknownst to uh, Mr. McIsaac and the other player, I forget his name that was with him, um, the two girls that they were talking to were the bouncers, the two bouncers. So they came over, they didn't like it, and one word led to another, and uh, the one bouncer said, you trashers are nothing but a bunch of pussies. And wrong. <laughs> McIsaac asked him to please step outside, and I believe it was one shot when he broke the guy's nose. And at one uh, thirty in the morning, I get a call from the police. <laughs> Got to come bail him out. <laughs> and but he it, went to anger management. As every well. every other weekend, not every weekend, every other weekend, I remember I'd be sleeping. You get hear the house phone, and you know, ah oh, man. You got Jerry Hickey over here banging beer bottles over, over his, his head, head like 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 a like a cartoon character. Who is it? McIsaac? Jerry, Jerry Hickey. Hickey. Lord Hickey, Wrestling. Oh, he character. passed away he recently passed. too. Wow. Lord Wrestling. But another tough guy. But the stories. Um, I mean, you're part of the fabric of Danbury hockey now. But I mean, even back then, it was just it was just wild. And I just remember my dad being like, "Oh my god." Like, 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 AJ, call so and so, or go get him, or or so have so and so get him, and and it was uh, it was funny. It was it's looking back now, it's what makes life go. These memories and having these stories, it's just hilarious to me. You know, looking back, you know, and then, you know, again, what people don't know. So our first, well, people knew our first year was the lockout, NHL lockout. Yeah. Lucky enough, obviously, everyone knows we get Mike Rupp with the Devils, won a cup the year before. Um, we even had tough guy Stephen Pete, if you remember. Right. Um, he he had that fight of the year with P.J. Stock. When yeah. They went, oh, yeah. We yeah. had Stephen Pete for a very short while, but that was a big deal back then to have Stephen Pete. I mean, we had Wingfield. We had all these guys. Wow. Now, we added Mike Rupp, but a lot of people don't know. Our good buddy, our friend, Sean Avery. Yeah, Sean. Sean Avery. Um, so... There was a team in the league, the Motor City Mechanics, and yeah. um, during the lockout, all the Detroit, a couple of the Detroit, for, listen, they had three guys from the Red Wings, Darian Hatcher, um, Chris Chelios, right. and Sean Avery. Now, right. Hatcher and Chelios were there, I think more for promotion, stay a little warm in case the season came, but they weren't taking it serious, yeah, and yeah. why yeah. should they? Yeah. Sean Avery, as we know. Well, he was taking it very serious. He's one of those guys that has an on and an off switch. He, he, he was taking dimmer. it serious. So we never crossed paths with Sean because we're in different divisions. And um, I knew who he was, type of, I mean, yeah. 
born to be a trasher. Yeah. I'll never forget my dad calls me, my next toe, and he goes, hey, I just got a voicemail. You, who's this Sean Avery guy? I said, oh, that's the guy from the Red Wings. Sean Avery called. I don't know how he even got the office number. And I wish, man, I wish we still had that voicemail. But he, it was around the trade deadline. Motor City wasn't going anywhere. They were dead last, I think. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to keep, he wanted to get traded to us. Wow. And um, I remember it came very close. A lot of people don't know Donald Brashear, Georges Larac, our buddy. Wow. We wanted to put together a fantasy tough guy line. Could you imagine, even if it was for a game, Donald Brashear at the time in his prime, Georges Larac, friend of the show, we're going to have him one day, and like a Sean Avery and like Stephen Pete, Mike Rupp. We wow. would have had, I mean, it's crazy to think, and we were trying. It was very close. You remember, you remember Brashear, Dad? It was close yeah. with him. Well, we had the attitude that uh, we didn't care about the other owners of the teams. Uh, it was uh, very much like Al Davis, just win, baby, and at any cost. I yeah. mean, okay. uh, the Broad Street uh, Bullies. Yeah. Show, yeah. Me a, show me a good loser, I'll show you a loser. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we were there to win, and at, uh, at any... Uh, at any cost. Yeah. Love that. Love well, that. it always brings me back to our battles with Adirondack. All right, so Adirondack, they were owned Barry Melrose, Steve Levy, big personalities at the time back then. I remember our first game, an all-girl game, was against Adirondack. We met Barry Melrose, nice guy, but again, I'm not saying he wasn't taking his team or the league serious. He was, but maybe a little more for show. I remember him meeting us, very res respectful to each other, shaking each other's hands, and... I remember Barry being like, hey, we're going to have a great year. And I'm just thinking to myself, this guy has no idea. <laughs> this guy has no idea that this isn't like ESPN to us. This isn't a joke. We are going well, to we are going to absolutely. It was, it was really much like in the Rocky movie when, when, when Apollo's uh, trainer is watching Rocky hit the meat and says, hey, champ, you better watch this. He doesn't know this is a no. Th this is ben, a fight. Listen, we we didn't. When we came in like obviously it's it's been said. Look it up. The Trasher story. We came in like a buzzsaw. But we were the we were public enemy number one in hockey before we even played a game. That's just because of yeah. stuff we were doing, the attention we were getting, the whole dynamic. Me, my dad, the whole nine yards. Um, something about that name and the logo. Even back then, before we even played a game, and I just remember Barry again. At, you know, very respectful, came to say hi to us. I met his son at the time. Maybe he was around my age. But um, I just remember thinking, you know, we're like shaking hands, being cordial. But, I mean, we talk about it. We don't do the camaraderie stuff. We're yeah. not, hey, hey, good luck. No, nah, we, I'm like, this guy has no idea. I would have a fit if our player helped another an opponent player up off the ice. Yeah, yeah well, we, we, call that, we call that tummy sticks now. Yeah, so yeah. it's no tummy sticks. It's the jer well, yeah. my dad, forget it. And that's where I get it from. Like the jersey swap generation. We don't do yeah. the camaraderie stuff. Like no tummy you want to know each other after the game when the fans yeah. are gone and mm -hmm. meet in the back. Hey, how's your wife? But but yeah. that stuff on the ice, forget it. But um, I just remember looking at Barry Mose. I'm like, this guy has no clue what we're going to do to this team because yeah. we we made them. Our, they didn't choose to be our rival. We mm -hmm. said, no, you're our rival and we're going to make your life hell. And it brings me back one of my greatest memories of my dad. Take hockey, all of it out of the equation. One of my favorite memories ever. You remember our first our first ever season, our first ever playoff appearance was against first round Adirondack Frostbite. They had home ice advantage. We're there the first two games. We go. We drove up. It's kind of like Lake George area. Th three hours, give or take. Me, my dad, never forget it. We get there. And funny story, remember driving up to Adirondack? I, we had an Escalade with the spinning rims. Remember no the spinning way. rims? Spinners? Yeah. That's and unreal. We hit a, I hit a pothole. He let me drive. It's very rare I would be driving. Usually he was the one driving. But And the, and the spinner passed us. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I hit a pothole right by Albany. And all of a sudden I hear, <laughs> he goes, the fuck, what was that? I go, I don't know. I look in the rearview mirror. It was like following us. The rim was like, no and I was like, no, I was so, I was so upset. And he's just laughing. Of course, that's something that made him laugh. Um, <laughs> but it, it was like, it, it, you never know. It, that could have been bad or yeah. we could have. But anyway, we go to, we go and game one goes a triple overtime. We win. We were like so excited. We won game two, game two in Adirondack, that playoff was probably the most intense hockey I've personally witnessed live. 
And I feel like even though it was only game two, Adirondack knew if we beat them that game, they're not coming to Danbury yeah. and, and running the table, right? So we're sitting there in the stands, and actually Steve Deep was with us, I believe, yeah. uh, my our good friend. And um, again, we get the third overtime. Now, going into the first overtime, guys are just, you know, imagine playing three o- two consecutive yeah. triple overtime. Going into overtime for this game two, guys are, guys, now we have section 102, okay, drove up. We had 100, of guys, 100 guys and girls come. Second overtime comes, these guys are drenched. They're drenched. Yes. Through. Section 102 is getting to us dry shirts off their back to give to the boys. No way. The guys were playing overtimes two and three in fan shirts underneath their jerseys because they were so drenched. That's the dedication. I mean, this is the greatest fans ever. You know how it is. And we won that game. And I have footage somewhere. I'm going to find it. Very rarely does my dad show emotion like this, but we were so amped we won. I'll never forget. It was like delirium. We were so delirious. Where we go on the ice, the tunnel, we're slapping guys high. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Adirondack fans are pissed. Sure enough, Barry Melrose, Steve Levy are up, you know, in their suite, you know, in the box in Adirondack. I'll never forget this because I felt like it happened in slow motion. My dad walks onto the ice. He looks up at them. I swear to God, it's like a movie. He looks up at them and Barry Melrose goes like, you know, congrats. My dad goes like this. I swear to Christ and I will find the footage. My dad goes. (laughs) <laughs> he, hit him with the, he hit him with the thumbs nice. down. <clears throat> I love that. I, That's I hilarious. about fell off my, I about That's fell off laughing. so funny. We go to the hotel. It's like two in the morning. We are wired. Me, him, my buddy Steve Deep, we order Domino's pizza, Eating I think. it on the hotel We're floor. We're on the floor, though. You know when you're so happy and like yeah. delirious? We're sitting on the, perfectly good beds right there. We're on the <laughs> floor, like three middle school kids I had a sleepover eating Domino's pizza. We pulled an all nighter, end up leaving in the morning. Yeah, but in that, if you recall that morning, uh, we were having breakfast, and who was their tough guy? That was Scott like, Page, the poor guy that was the only tough guy at Adirondack had. And that I'm year. trying to recruit him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We, get in the we ele- need one more. We need one oh, more. Oh no, it was so awkward, dude. So he's in the elevator already. Scott Page, our floor comes, ding, opens up. Me, my dad, my buddy Steve walking. Scott Page like this. <laughs> oh yeah but dad's like Scott how are you he was like good like this poor guy was the only guy that had an answer for Adirondack that whole first yeah. year fighting everyone Wingfield Morasti heck everyone but dad's like hey you know what there's always a home for a guy like you here in Danbury and he was just like <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think nice. I'm I think I'm buddies with him on Facebook it's funny to look back but um but yeah, that first year was crazy. We end up using we we lost in the semis to Muskegon that that first year, but uh, it was some ride. But what a lot of people don't know, I think you know about it. I might I think I told you. People don't know. So the the off season. So we're talking summer of 05, Okay, between you know two seasons, we get a call from a place called uh, a production company called Lion TV. I'll never forget, Phil Jubileo came over to us and said, hey, um, I got this fax. And hey. We're going to take another bathroom break, folks. We will be right back. It's tough to get old. (laughs) Back. Yeah, so what a lot of people don't know, like I said, is in between our only two seasons, we get a call. Phil Phil Jubileo comes over and one day in the summer says, hey, I got this email, this fax. I think it was a fax. Production company, production company in the city, um, Lion TV. Remember when reality TV was really becoming a thing? Yeah. The early two thousands. Like Spike TV. Yeah, like like like, like it was okay. just becoming a thing. Long story short, they wanted to talk to us about be doing a reality TV show on the Trashers oh, for wow. year two. Yep. So I go with Phil. We go to Manhattan. It's on the West Side, I think. And they're like, we we hear all this about the trashers. This is gold. And this is before any trouble, government stuff, anything. None of that stuff was happening yet. And they're like, we love this story, the father-son thing, the this, the that. We want to do a reality show. So me as a kid, I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be, this is gonna be great. This would be awesome. So sure enough, um, my dad okays them coming down to film for like a sizzle reel. So yeah, what like they were gonna pilot. do is 
do like a six minute sizzle reel pilot type of thing. And then we're going to pitch it to networks. So I remember they followed us for like a week straight, me, my dad, and there's footage. Actually, there's some footage. Um, and I have the, I have the sizzle reel. I want to make sure with the trademark and or not the trade, the You're copyrights that we can post it, but I'll post that whole sizzle reel. No one's seen it. If you see the sizzle reel, this would have been the funniest, the funniest oh, reality show of amazing. all time. But at the same time, it's best that it didn't happen. <laughs> but it's funny because in in the um, excuse me in the sizzle reel, it's revealed. So simultaneously, as this is possibly going on, right? So now I'm trying to prep for my second year of college, prepping for the second year of the Trashers. Now there's a potential reality TV show, and then. Like we said, my dad just can't leave well enough alone. So that's not enough action for us, right? My dad decides, you know what? So so I there was some rumblings that Adirondack was having some financial issues. Now, yeah. that was our biggest rival. Now, you know the economics of minor league hockey. If we lose our closest rival, it's going to be an issue with travel. Now we're going to, our closest rival, instead of being three hours away, is going to be four hours or five, six hours. So. Yeah. My dad decides, and I didn't really understand it then, and I used to hate the idea of it, but he was like, I'm just going to buy Adirondack and I'm going to give it to your sister. (laughs) Now, my sister was 14. Now, number one, my ego, I was like, no, I'm the youngest GM ever, and it has to stay this way. (laughs) There's no way my sister Candace is going to take that title from me. I can't let that happen. So I'd be pleading with him, dad, no. We can't. There are rivals. I hate them. Let them go out of business. Blah, blah, blah. Now, meanwhile, my dad's trying to explain to me, AJ, they leave. We're kind of screwed geographically. Yeah. I didn't want to hear it. I'm a teenager. I'm like, no, no. You know, I'm. I'm you don't I'm, care. Right? No, I don't care. But in the back of my mind, my ego, I'm like, I cannot, there's no way my sister can take my title from me. I, I cherish that. Yeah. Do you remember those days? Like he almost, now how did that come about? Was it Brussels or did someone say, hey, they're having, I mean, I, I remember hearing about it. We heard they were having some problems that they might be going up for sale. And uh, I said, uh, what better, what better way to create craziness than to have a brother, sister rivalry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that would create craziness. And, uh, I went so far as I had already had a, a graphic designer designing uniforms and logos and I was based. Did you have a team name? Or were you just I think keep it was going to stay Frostbite. Stay it was going to yeah. stay Frostbite. Yeah. And but could uh, you imagine that? Oh yeah. The best would have been, uh, you know, during dinner, one seeing who could get the money out of me to get this oh, player yeah. or that player. Yeah, yeah. They, and they, Candace they, 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 loved the idea deep oh, down. I'm she's sure like, she did. Now she knew she's going to stick it to me. She's going to take my youngest GM title. She's going to get all the and top she's guys gonna she can get, find, probably. And, and I was just like, oh, I, all right. That's. <laughs> I didn't talk to Candace <laughs> for like two weeks. I was pissed. <laughs> Legitimately. I would have loved to see that, though. That would have yeah. been a cool story. And then I guess, what, did they come up with something? And they ended up being fine, I guess. Yeah. And um, They're still you know, around. They're and, still and around. They're, they're in my league now. They're uh, not in our division. I don't think we play them yeah. for the rest of the year. But we the East Coast, yeah. Kalamazoo is in our division. We yeah. play them lots, uh, so I'll keep that rivalry uh, alive uh, for yeah, you guys. Kalamazoo, yeah. Kalamazoo. Oh man, oh man. So yeah, so the the fact that summer was wild because now you have. We just come off this historic and a crazy way season, minor league season with the Trashers, but the reality show would have been insane. And unfortunately, because of things that happened after that year, it's better off we didn't have one. Because yeah. Lord knows, but um. Crazy, crazy, crazy times. Do you, looking back that it's been so long now, the memories are fun, right? Like there was some tough times, but it was it was ultimately um, just great times. Yeah, it's uh, such a cool story. And it was, you know, for me getting oh, connected no. with both of you and just how it worked out. Like I seen the doc before there was ever a sniff of the original <laughs> King of the Ring tournament and stuff like that. And... Um, so I had seen that, and I was like, wow, this is such a cool story. And then um, I don't know how much later it would have been after the doc that we the tournament got announced. Yeah. And then I, I started messaging AJ, <coughs> and then I remember our first phone call. It was like a video call yeah. with all the other fighters. And then AJ reached out to me directly after. And then ever since then, I actually remember <coughs> a phone call with you, Jimmy. You phoned me. I want to say it was before. To introduce myself uh, before the tournament yeah. said hey you know um this is who i am this is what i'm about you know 
you know, thank you for being a part of what we're building, this and that. And, uh, you know, I hope to one day meet you. And I remember we were both like, right. we were both kind of like, oh, I don't know if we're going to get to meet because I was yeah. I was kind of stuck in Canada at the time. You were stuck down on this side of the border. And now here I am uh, sitting yeah, beside you. Yeah, it's crazy. And, 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 it's I, awesome. and we always talked. I mean, when we first connected, I kind of just knew. I'm like, oh, man, this guy's a star. This is something's going to come of this. And. Here we are doing a podcast. Yeah, crazy. And, um, <laughs> Such a cool story. And and then now I am, you know, obviously <coughs> things didn't go great with the with the hat tricks situation and, and hockey and stuff, but I think everything happens for a reason. And uh, you know, unfortunately I gotta move out of town for a little bit, but we're gonna keep everything going here. I'll well, still get you to know, be all you need to remember in life is that every time a door closes, another opens. So yes. don't worry about it. Yes, exactly. Well, and we, and I and I and I honestly think hockey wise, like this is a great opportunity for me. Great to be a part of a city and then like all these teams it's so cool, like I'm get like we're talking <laughs> about these teams. Uh at Kalamazoo or, 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 uh Who's it's bringing team? back so many members. Yeah. It's like how we said in last week's episode is Fort Wayne. I mean, they were in our league, and yeah. we never had issues with them. You know, yeah. we always respected them. They always they carried themselves differently than the other teams and yeah. stuff, and they respected us too. So, just the fact that just the fact that you're back in this situation is yeah. crazy. Well, it would be cool. Uh, be cool to get you guys to <laughs> a uh, to a game and uh, absolutely out in Fort Wayne, maybe possibly a game against Kalamazoo. <laughs> so I know we've talked about it. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what the schedule looks like for us coming to um, coming out this way. But uh, I know AJ said he's going to try and make it out. We'd love to have you come catch a game. Well, if we can make it, we'll definitely come. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. It's been uh, it's been great since I've been here. You guys, like I said, it's it's all the things that you've done for not only the community in here, obviously like for, uh, the football teams and stuff like that. Um, the rink, like you know. You, I got to be honest with you. All all of the things that that I've done for the community it was it's not to be self-serving. You, yeah. I find in life you do things because you want to do things, not yeah. because you have to. Yeah. And uh you know, uh things in life happen. Yeah. What can I tell you? Yeah, and and I mean at the end of the day, um even the worst things that that happen, there's there's a reason for it and there's growth yeah. that comes out of it. And you know it's 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 all happening exactly the way it's supposed to. I think, and yeah. and uh, that's something that I've had to learn over the years because of some of the stuff that I've gone through that was really difficult for me. Um, and then you know now I've got to the point where when something really bad does happen to me, or even when this stuff was happening with the with the hockey and stuff like that, I just knew deep down inside of me I was like everything's happening for a reason. You know, it's and it's all. And then now look, my situations kind of came turned around and now I'm like, oh my God, like I have a real opportunity here hockey wise. And, yep. and, uh, and you know, we get to continue <clears throat> doing everything we're doing here with the podcast and stuff like that, which is awesome. So, you know, obviously after the doc came out, really blew the, the roof off this whole story and, and it's become, it's crazy. We never expected it to be like this. I've done a lot of podcasts. People ask me about things and this and that, but how did you feel about the podcast overall? I don't think anyone's obviously ever, I mean, you don't talk to many people anyway, but how did you feel about the doc? How did you, I mean, I know we talked about it. We never expected it to explode the way it did. How did you feel overall about well, just the whole situation with the doc? Because again, remember, contrary to what people may believe, him especially, but we're private people. We got a podcast now. We know why we have it. You got to have some sort of platform these days. But we're old fashioned, we're old school, very private, mm -hmm. especially him. Yeah, you know deep down I am too. I don't, yeah. I don't really put myself out there too, too much. But um, it was definitely a discussion we had when the Way Brothers reached out. Like, do we really want to do this? Do we really want to open this can of worms? Because you can't tell the trash story without a lot of other stuff and vice versa. And I just remember him and I discussing it, and I'll never forget. We came, what we kind of mutually came up with is, you know what? We trust these guys. If we, 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 if they could gain our trust, it's our way to tell the story, you know, the way you, from, from our point of view. Yeah. And it's just like we talked about last week with having a platform to be able to push back sometimes because if you don't have a voice this day and age, you're screwed. So I'll never forget him saying, you know what? Let's meet with them. If we feel good about them. We'll do it. Let's tell it, you know, let's tell it how it, how it was, you know? You know, at the end of the day, a lot of people don't believe it, but that documentary was 99.5% true. 
everything you saw in there was right on right on the money and um you know uh, there's no getting away from the past the past is the past uh you know i was i've never been a an angel but i definitely wasn't a devil mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of the day i still look myself in the mirror i have no regrets mm -hmm. and uh you know, you just learn from your mistakes and you move forward. Yeah, and that's something that I look up to about you and the, those qualities. I know I, I, we've, I've spoke with it. I've said it to <clears throat> AJ a million times, just all these qualities that got you where, like, I always look at, like, everything you did. Build, building a business on the level you did takes a very special type of character, which which you show all the way to this day, that character and, and just the the – the, the nitpickiness of like, hey, everything needs to be perfect and everything needs to be done the right way. And it's, and that comes down to your morals and your character. And that goes all the way into AJ and how AJ is to this day. And it's it's just something I look up to yeah. so much. And my, hopefully my dad, Lord Ressam, used to say all the time, if, if you're not going to do it right, don't do it at all. Yeah, I and, love that. And, and again, I said it earlier in this episode, you know, as a kid, whether people want to downplay or not, I was around my dad and a lot of people for, and I would see everything, a lot of stuff, and I wouldn't understand why is he going crazy over a pinstripe on a mm -hmm. truck. And then, as you get older, it's the same reason why people are like, AJ, why do you have to have the heavy bags in the gym so a certain yeah. way? Yeah. And now I'm like, because that's how you have to do it. Yeah. And I hope to, you know, his grandson my son dominic i'm hoping to instill a lot of those values in him yeah and um you know ag again you, we talk about i talk about that picture that i have in my office of him pointing and he's showing the news mm -hmm. times reporter at the time this is early 20 you know 2004 what he's going to do with the arena and i tell people it's not a joke the eyes he sees a vision he saw it with the garbage he saw it with the race cars he saw it with the high school hockey team. He saw it with a football field. He saw it with the trashers. And some people just have that gift. And you can't, at some point, you know, every, look, a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. But at some point, you got to give the man his flowers, as they say. Because mm -hmm. at some point, how, you can't downplay all these things. And now we go to present day, San, Danbury San Gennaro. Mm -hmm. We talked about this, 2019. Yeah, We're having dinner. And he's like, you know what? I want to start, you know, we go to the one in the city, you know, yeah. most of our life. Um, let's start one in Danbury. Yeah. I love the idea. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, and he spearheads it. You know, he's a quarterback. And yeah. the first year we couldn't do it. It was 2020. It was going to be 2020 was going to be the first year. And you know what? That was the you, COVID, COVID and, year. Yeah. So, so, you can do it. so okay. we, this year will be our third. And if everyone's listening, we're going to promote it heavy going into yeah. next, uh, you know, this coming August. You got to come down. Um Still haven't ate a cannoli, by the way. Yeah. I'm Still, I came close the other day. I, think I heard Jimmy's in the cannoli eating contest. This year. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't but, want to ruin But again, it. you know, I know when my dad says he's going to do something, I'm always there to help. But I also know he's the quarterback and he doesn't need, all I need to do is play offensive line. Yeah. Sometimes with other things, I got to be a running back. Or, but when I know my dad is going to spearhead something, yeah. I just got to be the offensive lineman. Yeah, yeah. And um, you saw it. You saw it last year. Oh, it's it, a. It's it's. It's you know it's, what it's. I, and it's. I'm not surprised, but he, it'll still blow my mind every year when the lights first go up yeah. on Ive Street, and it's like, oh man, this is crazy. Yeah. It's just like he did it again. I said it so many times. Like we, I was there as. Oh, I would say every day I came by at some point, um, if I could, depending on hockey and stuff like that. But I live right up the road. I'm a five minute walk from the downtown core. And I feel like throughout the year, we didn't really enjoy that downtown area too much. I was saying it. I was like, man, I wish San Gennaro was all summer long. I the wish it went all summer long because I walked down there with my family, whether whether I had yeah. my kids or just me or my, everybody. We'd all come down and we'd just hang out and we'd run into yeah. people and, and everybody was happy. There's there's stuff for the kids to do. There's games and, yeah. and uh, events and stuff like that and amazing food. And it was just I felt like everybody was happy to be there. It was like it brought the community together. Well, and like it was I, such like a cool I said, thing. it's just, it's this. What are the dates this year, Dad? August twenty. August twenty first to the twenty fifth. So this year, our third one gonna yeah. come out, and uh, and my dad's working. He's yeah, not yeah. hanging out, yeah. smoking a cigar at the table. He's working. Yeah. We're working. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can't tell him that he's not gonna work. He's gonna yeah. keep going, and uh, it's gonna be. We're gonna promote it heavy I, as we get my closer. Ki but. My kids love the laser show. 
Yeah. The laser show was so cool. That was like, and we did, we missed it the first, the first night yeah. or whatever. But when we got the laser show finally, cause it was a little bit later, I think. And then I was like, no, nope, we're going to keep the kids that was, we're staying here until the laser show. And they loved it. They were yeah. buzzing around the grass and it was nighttime and everybody was down there and it's, and it's safe and fun. And it's a, it's honestly a really beautiful part of town. It, it really is. is. It's when a really it's nice. Done, when it's done right. And yeah. like I said, my dad will always, and again, I'm biased, but it's the truth is the truth. And like I said, it's one thing to be biased. It's another thing if a guy does one good thing and the rest suck. Yeah. But everything yeah. he gets involved First in, class. it just yeah. ends up being, and, um, you know, it's just, it's going to be a great time. I'm already, I mean, um, and I spoke with Tina the other day where we're getting ready for new ideas for this yeah. year. I mean, it's going to be even bigger, better. It always is. It's we, only a matter of time until my dad's physically holding fireworks out of his hand and shooting them <laughs> off. Shooting Roman candles. Always, we always got to one-up it. Well, you know what we have to do? I think we should just do a, a repeat of what we're doing right here. On the stage, we can do a live episode. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah we Something should, like right? that would be awesome. Probably one of my favorite, funniest, trasher stories was we, the Trashers were on a six or a seven game losing streak. I don't mean to interrupt you. Is this the tennis balls? Well, look at what I wrote here. See, this is the in sync stuff, okay? Yeah. I was going to hit two stories with my dad as we, we wrap up here, and I'll set you up for this one, okay? I'm going to set my dad up for this because I literally wrote tennis balls here, That's as holy. you can see. Yeah, yeah. People, I'm not full of shit. It says tennis balls. So we're on a six-game losing streak, and it was on the road mostly. So the guys come home. And uh, it's a Friday, and um, I'm at the office with my dad on White Street before we head to the game. And again, he always drives. I don't ever drive. He goes, come on, we'll take your car. Um, let's go. We'll go to – I'm like, it's a little early. He goes, no, no, come on. So I get in the car. I'm driving. He goes, go to Sports Authority. And Sports Authority was before Dick's Sporting Goods and everything. Yeah. It's right by the mall. Yeah. And uh, now it's a car dealership or something over there. But anyway, he goes, go – drop me off at Sports Authority. I go, sports authority? I'm not going to ask questions. I go, drop them. He comes back with like a mesh sack of tennis balls, probably 50 to 100. Yeah, but, but what leads up to that is on that losing streak, everybody was lackadaisical. We could stream it and watch at home. Nobody's fighting. Nobody's doing this. Nobody's doing that. They were lacklustered. And I went in and I, I got the tennis balls and he knew I was pissed, but he had no idea what was so, going so we on. Get, so we get in the car, he comes in with the tennis ball. Now, again, I know my dad's in the mood. I don't, I'm not asking him, why do you have a thing of tennis balls? I'm not asking not him. Even go to the rink. Go to the rink. Go in my office. He goes, take the balls, put them under the table. Put them under the table. Go watch the game. We get shit kicked that night. He, uh, final horn blows. He looks at me. He goes... Meet me at the locker room where the chalkboard is. Meet me there in 15 minutes. Bring those tennis balls. Because we had a game the next night. And I went in there, and they're all sitting there. And I can remember looking at the two Omocelli brothers, and they're looking at me, and I could <laughs> tell just what they were thinking. Here it comes. And I'm looking at all of them, and I said, what the fuck are you guys doing out? You're doing absolutely nothing. I'm paying you all this money. Boop, 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 boop. I said, I'll tell you what. And I opened up the bag of tennis balls, and I dropped them right in the middle of the floor. They went bouncing all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I said, anybody doesn't have a set of balls, pick them up. We'll see what happens tomorrow night. I think we beat the team the we next day. We won. <laughs> we shut out. The next day, we won 5 nothing. Nice. I think we went out and of four games. But it was, it was crazy. But, but it was, he's right. He throws the tennis balls, right? And they're bouncing hitting guys in the head, and they're not moving. They're like, think, think, and they're just like taking it. Thinking. What are they going to say? You know what I mean? And it was one night I was in there, and I went off, and I didn't know that the jersey, some superstition, isn't supposed to hit the, the crest. floor. The yeah. crest, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. they had everything hanging on the, the thing there yeah. you know, so they could grab their jerseys. I, I was so crazy. I knocked them all off, and they went on the floor, and they're, they're all jumping the floor, up, picking like, them up. You know, they're like tweaking, right? Yeah. Like the OCD, like they're yeah. not supposed to be on the floor. But and he's throwing it. He's but throwing I was it. crazy. I was throwing sticks, you name it. No, he, and, and, and then the worst, though, the worst. And, and you know what? People could say what they want about me. I've been fortunate, lucky, whatever. You're right. But you know what? I wasn't fortunate and lucky when I had to go home after we losing. 
These guys all went to a bar, went to the hotel. They took a little yelling. And guess who had a ride home with my dad? Me. Uh. And it would be like, you know something, AJ? I've given you all these opportunities. And I tell people, he would have fired me. And there was a time in the second season I thought he was... I wouldn't say he would publicly fire me, but he was going to relieve me of Push my you duties. Push a little bit. And, and I'm telling you, like, you know, you, you, this team is a reflection on us. It's a reflection on you. And I would just take it, take it, take it. And it would be the bit of worse. Sometimes when it, things were bad, it wasn't the yelling. It would be the quiet. You know? So it's like it, that's how it was. Get in. Our coach would talk to the boys. You know how it is. Fire the boys up. Then my dad would always have the last word. We'd come up. Some days my dad would just go there, just look around. I just walk away, wouldn't say boo, and guys are like, "What is going on here?" And but it, listen, it works. It, yeah. it, it, it that stuff, especially in those days, work. But at the end of the day, uh, nothing was done with any type of malice or hatred. No. Yeah, I, I respected them. I believe they respected me. I mean, you know, even the incident with Wingfield on the ice. I mean, how can you, as an owner, expect? your guys to go out there and lock horns every night for your team. Yeah. And when one of your best players, Wingfield at the time, you know, that happened to him, uh, you know, there was a reason why I had an incident with the, with the referee. Allegedly. Yeah. Eh, allegedly, not allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Statute of limitations is over. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I wanted my players to know that I was willing to do everything yeah. myself yeah. that the I expected them to do. It starts. Yeah. It always starts at the top. Well, and, then, and also, too, another thing, like, that goes into, like, just the role of being a tough guy and just being family first, just like you are, on, like, whether you're involved with the team or business or just sitting here at the table, family first and – like what I do is kind of the same thing. It's like people might look at one side of it like, oh, he's doing this to go after these guys. It's like, no, no, no. Everything I'm doing is for the guy beside me. Yeah. There's no bad intentions. My intentions are pure. My intentions yeah. are for the guy beside me. And, and I think, you know, you're the same but, thing. But, you know, um, as far as the team goes, we had a lot of, a lot of great players. I mean, Brad Wingfield. As AJ knows, I, I, I love Winger. Uh, Frankie Bialois and I have a special relationship yeah. to this day. Frankie and Another I guy talk. that doesn't get – you know, it's funny. I don't mean to interrupt you. That It's funny. The doc can only talk to so many players, right? Mm -hmm. So they get their play – people forget there were so many other than Winger and stuff. The yeah. characters that were on this room team. In, room in the door, loved them to death. Mario Larocque, one of my all-time favorites. I mean – you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, AJ and I have talked, and uh, do I have any regrets? The, I only have two regrets. We got rid of two players that I wish we didn't, uh, Bruce Richardson mm -hmm. and Mike Bayrack. They were, they were great. But, I, but again, what— we can't be too hard on ourselves. Yes, in a perfect world, we could have brought— but you know with the vet rules, the rookie mm -hmm. rules, what happens is— we got into a situation that we had so many vets on the team, we had to cut loose some, and it yeah. sucked. But I agree, losing, and I talked to Mike Bayrack recently. He lives in really? Edmonton. He lives in Edmonton. Uh -huh. I saw him at one of the King of the Ranks. Um, and again, like you said, they all, the respect they always have for, for my father, and um, and that's what I try to do now. I try to build the same type of stuff in my own ways, and it's not easy because, it's it you like you said, and you see it. I'm in the trenches every day. You have to show these guys. You're in the trenches every day with them, and that's how it works, you know? Yeah. But, you know, uh, and and even the refs, you know, other than the altercation I had with that one ref. Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> 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 we, uh, well, being Italian, everything's allegedly. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, we use that word lots around here. <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, you know, even the refs, they they were all respectful. Uh, Look what I wrote here. I, my neck, my last thing I was going to ask you was about the refs. The fun we used to have. I the, would throw. Snickers. Snickers down to them M &Ms. before the game. Yeah. M&Ms. If we had cupcakes, we'd throw them down. We'd joke with them, this, that, the other thing. <laughs> Opposing team would come in. One of their star players, I'd get their attention during warm-ups. 
and I'd pull out my wallet and wave. I said next year, and we'd we'd do everything and anything just to uh, get that uh, racer's edge. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it was a great two years, and uh, you know, um, Rosell and I, you know, he uh, to this day we still speak. He's a great guy. I can't say anything bad. But what I do want to say before we wrap this up is that um, at the end of the Trashers, I never really got an opportunity to thank all of the fans, everybody, especially Section 102. Uh, without them, there never would have been a Danbury Trashers team. Uh, all the uh, vendors, public support, everything. You know, uh, it's 20 years later, but uh, I have this opportunity to say thank you. I appreciate it. My family appreciates it. And uh, that's it. And, and uh, it's not public as of yet, but I can tell you that a script's been written by Netflix and there will be a trasher movie. Wow. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's, there you go. that's some heat right there. Wow, that's amazing! Wow, well, and, and he didn't even set me up for that. I didn't even know he was gonna he was gonna say that. So coming he's back on, come with the surprises. That's amazing, and like just go based on what you what you guys are saying. You guys really did build something very special in the arena, in the community, in the city of Danbury. And there's guys like me, guys that are still playing <clears throat> in, in Danbury. <clears throat> sorry, in Danbury that are still getting to to feel. Uh, that's how special it is what well, you guys built and how amazing the fans are and stuff like that and and that's you know you guys were a big part of that well, you guys I, are the reason that it's all I there, tell so. people people like authenticity they like real stuff and when you deal with my dad deal with you deal with me certain people you just know it's real um, we live in a day with Instagram and all the stuff and it's fake and people get clout yeah. for two minutes <laughs> everything we've done is, and he taught me it's legacy people don't forget we can we can. This could be our last podcast ever. It's not. This could be the last p time we ever talk about the treasures. And in 15 years, people will still want to talk about yeah. the treasures. You know, one of the biggest things that, you know, being the elder statesman here, one of the biggest things that aggravate me is that uh, people nowadays have the tendency, I call them keyboard cowards. Yeah. They yeah. sit at a, a computer <clears throat> And they let out their frustrations. And nine times out of ten, those same people that have something negative to say about you, and you don't know who they really are, yeah. are the ones that come up to you and put hugs their arm around you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hugs and kisses, you're the greatest. When I was growing up, you had a problem with somebody. You went outside. You settled it like a man. You get up. You dust each other mm -hmm. off. You went and had a drink, and you were still friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what? You knew where you stood. Nowadays, you don't know. Well, you know, a funny story about exactly what you're saying, and I don't know if I'm really even supposed to bring this up or not, but we were at Easter dinner. I don't know if you remember. But I ran, remember we, Easter dinner. We ran into, we ran into a <laughs> you gentleman. Ran in, you ran into a friend we ran into that, a that, that was holding on. I think you know what I'm talking about, a guy that did the wrong thing at the time, but was holding on to that guilt. Remember, you saw you saw a guy, we don't need to say his name, yeah. but a guy who held on to a lot of guilt for doing, you know, not the right thing yeah. 20 years ago. And uh, yeah. and I remember you kind of looking at me, and you I can't remember exactly what you said, but you kind of, it was kind of like that. You said, hey, like, you know, you see but that? But you know, you'll, yeah. you'll learn as you get older that you have to forgive yeah. to be forgiven. Yeah. And the best advice I can give all the young men that are out there is be true to yourself. Uh, when you have your children, stay very close to them, teach them the right things, and uh, they'll go far. Well, I want to end Amazing. it with this because this is exactly how I wanted to end it. Because everybody, you know, you talk about the Trasher story. Again, the documentary, there's so many layers. There's so many things about it. But everyone, for the most part, says... They love the father-son dynamic. And I can't tell you how many people reach out to me. You got the best dad in the world. I'm like, I know. You got the best dad in the world, blah, blah, blah. What tips can you give me 
for your grandson, Dominic? What can I do for my son to try to be, you know, as good as you were to me, Candace, and basically everyone else around you? Listen, just uh, tell them constantly that you love them, okay? Uh, always point him in the right direction and uh, try not to be as hard on him as I was on you. <laughs> well, I think it was good. I think, sure. I think looking back, I mean, there's got to be a balance. But I think I have no regrets and— uh, I thank you for all you've done for me. Well, and I love you. Well, I love you too. And I, lo- I, love I love you too. I love, I love Daniel you guys. too. I love, I love Daniel. I, I love Daniel. We I all appreciate love Daniel. you guys. We, like I said, you guys are my family, and you guys have been, you've been, you know, you're somebody I look up to, and you've you'll been nothing always but be, good Listen, I, I say it all the time. You know what? You don't have to be blood to be family, and we yeah. consider you family, so. Thank you. The door is always open. Well, awesome. I mean, we talked about it. We couldn't have a guest until it worked out with my dad. Yeah. And, you know, we I'm glad we, you've had a crazy two weeks. I, we were going to do this earlier, so everyone's like, when are you doing guests? When you, well, not until not until the big dog came in we are going to have any guests. So, ruff, ruff. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> <laughs> That's got a clip. We're clipping it. Thank you. Thank you Fair guys enough. for watching. This was uh, obviously the best episode we ever yeah. had. And uh, like, subscribe. YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Thank you all. And, and I want to thank Ian. Ian. Ian Bick. Locked in with Ian Bick. Make sure you like us. I mean, you probably already are liked and subscribed. He's got how many hundreds of thousands of people now? Yeah. He's, he's big time in us. Big he's, he, won't even eat, he won't even eat food with yeah, us. Yeah, I, I heard the bark. He's eating I just chicken about salad. Ian, right Ian did, you eat a, did you eat a donut? <laughs> no, chicken. He's sticking to chicken salad. <laughs> thank you, guys. We'll catch you guys next week.